Hello, I'm Sam Wheel, and this is Analytical Mysticism, and today we're going to be talking about the three stages of love. And those three stages are loving the outer aspects of something, or your, or your perceptions of something, loving the thing itself, and then loving the essence of a thing. So, the first stage of love, which would be loving one's perceptions of something, would be what I would call um, a crush, or what other people might say is infatuation, when you become so overtly in love with something um, that maybe you don't have too much interaction with. And people would say sometimes that, that this is not a true form of love, and I'd say, in fact, it is a true form of love, it's just that the object is different. So instead of loving the human being as they are, right, it's loving one's idea of a human being, right, and that idea may or may not be accurate. But you could say what forms a crush as like a special type of love, right, is that you're loving the perception of the human being uh, instead of the human being itself. So it's just like, oh, your idea that this person is always sweet, well, they might be sweet most of the time, right, but there might be times where they're actually quite rough, you know. Um, and so, oftentimes, you know, these perceptions that we have of human beings are very, you know, feeble creations that we have in our head. Um, and, you know, they get burned through quickly. You know, I think of love oftentimes as a fire and it requires certain fuel in order to keep going. And these apparitions that we create in our heads, which are I call a crush, right, oftentimes don't have enough fuel in order to keep going, you know, because, you know, it's something that you've created in your head. And so that leads to the second form of love, which would be loving the individual for, you know, the fullness of their person and not simply our ideas about them. You know, understanding that this person, you know, uses the restroom, uh, has positive and negative qualities to it and loving that individual you know as they are or sometimes even as they are not you know because a part of loving an individual is seeing that person's potential it's like oh I love that you're you will be able to do this this and that right you're here at this moment but I see you know all these further aspects of possible growth you know um, so, in a sense, loving someone for who they are, the second stage of love, is, can also include loving them for who they are not, uh, which ironically is almost in the fullness of loving them for who they are. And this is a lot more substantial than loving a crush. You know, a human being has a lot more substance to them than your ideas of a human being, right? Someone will always be a lot more richer in person than our imaginations of them, you know, could uh, ever reach to. Um, but in the same sense that loving your ideas of someone can be kind of empty um, and doesn't provide you with the fullness of experience of loving like a human being, you know, loving a human being, even in their fullness, is kind of empty, you know, in connection to the third stage of love, which is loving, you know, what's beyond the human individual, which is loving reality itself, you know, that this human individual is only a, an aspect, one amongst an incalculable amount of aspects of reality itself that reality is always presenting itself in a myriad of different forms and that this individual you know as great as they are are only ever simply an aspect of that reality so in learning to love a human being right like you get a positive experience about it and there's so much that is to love right but at the end of the day it's also only a very limited experience because if you fixate on only loving one aspect of reality there's all these different other aspects of reality 
that kind of get swept under the table and you don't get to experience you don't get to experience the love of those things as well it's like loving a very particular version of someone as opposed to loving you know all the different ways that they could manifest it's like for example loving someone insofar as they're not using the restroom I don't know <laughs> you know would be an example of that it's like oh I love reality as it manifests itself to me in this person um, and that can bring some amount of joy you know but without loving the fullness of reality itself at the end of the day you're kind of cutting yourself off so the first and the second less stages of love you know can bring you happiness but they're kind of empty in a way you know in order to have the full you know experience of love loving reality itself you have to learn how to love reality in all of its aspects and how it presents itself to you in a myriad of ways um, so if you do want to hear me talk about other topics in uh, other videos I do suggest that you do check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel